Hey all everyone, long time no see. So today we are back with a new video from the Particle System series. This is the 15th video. So we're going to resume from where we left in the previous video, which is video 14, which is linked in the description of this video. And what we're going to do here is to apply a texture to every particle. So all our points that represent our particles are actually rendered as little images. So in fact, if we make them a bit bigger, uh, you can see that these are actually a little image of a flame. So then with blend, uh, blend add, it looks a bit like fire. It's kind of nice. So this will teach you how to add an image to your particles. This technique can be used in every other case in which you want to add an image to a GGL mesh draw mode points in GL3. And we are also going to add the random initial velocity to our particles, as we mentioned at the end of the previous video. So let's dive in and see how we can do all these things. So this is the patch as we left it last time. If you can remember, or if you just watched that the previous video, we added that the particles are all coming outside of our emitter uh, with a velocity of zero, because we set the velocity to be zero. We reinitialize it to zero every time the particle dies. So uh, that's not really cool because it looks a bit uh, like a tentacle or something, which could be cool, but it's not exactly what we want. So, in order to assign to the particles an original velocity, we can actually use our random texture that is here. So, it's a texture that contains four planes of random numbers, so four channels of random numbers. We can actually use this to assign um, an initial velocity to our particles. For the moment, we are just using the first plane of this texture to set the mass of the particles. So we have three planes that we don't use, which we can use exactly for the vector of the initial velocity. So before we do that, let me actually put a bit of uh, order in our patch, especially about the parameters for the transfer feedback. So all this part about the attractor position, I guess we can actually encapsulate, right? So this is the attractor position, right? And this is actually the wind strength that we can set manually. So the wind strength is just going to be like a, a random force applied to the to all the particles, which follows, I guess, I don't really remember, but I think it follows the attractor position, the, the wind. So yeah, this looks good. And then we got here our tractor strength, okay, we can leave it like that, and the maximum velocity, and then the speed of the wall uh, simulation. So that's all good. We can leave it as it is. Uh, great. And, okay, cool. So here we got our tractor, so the actual sphere, which we can actually encapsulate. encapsulate. So this is our tractor sphere or something. I can put it, uh, I can put it somewhere here. Uh, that's this. This is our um, containing. Uh, this is the cube that contains our simulation. We can put this here. Uh, this is our random texture, which I would actually like to put somewhere here on the bottom. Great. And good. This is the the rendering shader. So the shader responsible for the appearance of our particles. From here, we can, for example, set the particle size and so on, the color of the particles. And here is the transfer feedback shader. Right. So what we're going to do now is to go inside the transform feedback shader. So what I do is to just double click on GGL shader object. It will open the shader automatically in um, Visual Studio Code. That's what I set from my preferences. Great. So as I said, we have this uh, random texture that we are not really using. Uh, we're only using one plane of this texture, texture to set the value of the mass. So we are accessing this texture here to set the value of the mass grade. But uh, we could also use that uh, to create the initial random velocity. Um, so let's do like this. Let's create a vector for and call it uh, random texture values or something. And this is going to be equal to the sampling of this texture using uh, the GL vertex ID divided by the number of the particles that we got, which is uh, 10,000 minus 1, basically, because it goes between 0 uh, to the amount of particles that we got. So now it will go between 0 and 1. Good. So the mass uh, is simply going to be equal to random texture values dot x. So only one plane of this texture. And then we want to 
inside here if lifetime is uh, less or equal to zero which means our particle is dead instead of setting the uh, velocity to to zero we set it to basically random tester values dot um, epsilon z w because the oops, epsilon z w because the x we already used for the mass uh, we want to multiply this by 2 and subtract 1 to that so we are now in the range uh, minus 1 to 1 and then we probably want to multiply this whole thing by um, a small number in order to have uh, um, velocity that is not too high and let's see how this looks like okay it looks pretty great uh, because the particles are now not uh, let's try to change it in real time so the particles are now not uh, starting as a tentacle so if you will set this to zero they will start as a tentacle right because they have no initial velocity at all but if we set this a bit higher then they start as uh, they start uh, going in all random direction and then they are actually attracted by the attractor so we can set this a bit smaller 0.01 and we can play a bit around with this parameter until we are satisfied so it looks more like water or, or um, something heavier so it all depends from what we want to achieve we can change it to this parameter so great so to give a longer life to our particles we can do that by changing our life subtraction amount uh, but we could actually change this with a parameter since uh, we also set it so u life subtraction amount so let's actually create prepend that and uh, no, I was doing using pack okay so let's keep using pack for consistency and uh, we can then set uh, uh, we can then use a float number to change the how much life we want to subtract at every frame so if we really subtract a small amount of life then they should live longer and stay longer around and doesn't work because of course I connected the float number to the wrong inlet so it actually uh i was not sending the right message so let's try like this right so now the particles should be more time around which is exactly what they are doing okay great but if you want to have a continuous stream of particles from the emitter we can set this value a bit higher um good so now let's go to the part in which we actually set an image for uh, as a texture for our particles so this is kind of called sprite so we create uh, uh, sprites for our particles which means the these are images that are always going to face the camera uh, doesn't matter which angle the camera is the image will always face the camera and we can do that like this we actually need to access the render shader so the green one this time and we need to actually create a new texture which uh, in which we can load our image so let's actually create it um, under our random texture so let's actually pack that as random texture let me actually highlight the sub patches with a color which i usually do which i find it very handy i will make them purple Great, so we know what is actually a sub patch and what is not. Great, so we need to create a new GGL texture which renders to TF particles. Uh, we don't want to have any rectangles, so because we want to have the, um, the sampling of this texture to go between 0 and 1, the sample coordinates, so we want to set rectangle 0. Right, we want to give it a name, uh, which we call it the sprite texture or something. Sprite text, right. And that's basically it. We can. Um, I have already downloaded an image from the internet, which is a little sprite image of a flame. And the cool thing about this image is that it has an alpha channel. So everything that is not the flame has an alpha value of zero. And this is really great when we want to use blend enable with the alpha. So it's only going to show the flame and not the actual square of the image. Oh, and as you can see, the. Uh, the the particle behavior went back to the tentacle thing because actually the texture now is empty now that we repacked it so we need to click again on the bang and uh, uh, refill the texture otherwise it was just full of zero that's why it was not really working great so uh, now let's take care of our texture so as i said i had to load this file which i called sprite.png so i can just say file sprite.png since it's in the same folder is going to find it 
So if we visualize with the GTP window what's inside this texture now, we can see that is actually our sprite. Great. And now we can attach this texture to the CGL mesh because we are going to need to read this texture from the shader. So we say texture, uh, we call this sprite text. Great. This is the only texture we attach to the GGL mesh until now. The other random texture is actually attached to the GGL transform feedback object, not to the to the GGL mesh. But since this is a texture that we're going to use for the rendering of the particles, we have to attach it to the GGL mesh because we want to access it from the shader attached to the GGL mesh and not from the transform feedback shader. Great. So let's go inside the rendering shader and create a new texture. So render shader is this one here. Let's create a new param name. Uh, this is going to be sprite. Uh, it's actually a uniform. So u sprite text text something like that. This is a type int because all the textures in this G in this JXS wrapper are of type int. Default is equal to zero because this is the only texture we have in uh, attached to the GGL mesh. Then we need to bind it. So bind param use sprite text uh, program. We're going to bind it to the fragment shader because we are going to read it and apply it in the fragment shader. So uh, now that we have it, let's go inside our fragment shader here at the end. So program name FP, this is our fragment shader. Let's create a new uniform. Uh, this is of type sampler 2D, not to direct because we took rectangle away, so rectangle zero, so we, it's only type sampler 2D, and this is called use sprite text. Great. So now we need to read it, and we're going to read it using the same um, coordinates that we used to to create the circle. So it's basically the GL point coordinates. So let me actually comment out uh, our algorithm until now. So if I'm going to say they will just look like little squares because that's how uh, points look in GL3 when rendered uh, with GL mesh. They will just look like squares, not like circles. So we did this whole algorithm here to make them look like circles. But now we want to do like this. We want to say back for uh, equals sprite uh, color is equal to texture, so now we're going to sample our texture, which is use bright text, and we're going to sample it using our GL point coordinates, which go from 0 to 1 uh, inside these little squares. So it's like if every of these little squares have those coordinates that go from the left corner to the right corner, they go from 0 to 1. Uh, good. And now we can assign our color to be equal to our sprite color, and that's uh, uh, what we got. So these are our uh, image. Uh, represented on every little particle. Great. Now let's make the particle a bit bigger and let's uh, activate the blend enable. So as you can see, the alpha is disappearing. Um, the only problem with that is that when we go with blend add, it's going to uh, consider also the alpha. So what we want to do is probably to multiply it to the sprite color by sprite color dot alpha. So it basically, when the alpha is zero, is going to take away the uh, the color, in case we use color add, and also if we don't use the blend, then it's just going to uh, look like this, uh, with depth enable, right? But if we use the blend and we use blend alpha blend, then it's just going to give us our image attached to every particle, and this trick you can use with every. Uh, shader attached to a GGL mesh in order to render uh, images instead of dots, instead of points. So that's pretty great and that's basically it. So we can make this bigger also with the um, particle size, right? We can use a different blending like for example color add, which looks pretty great, looks like fire or something. So this is it. Uh, we could actually make it that we can choose if we use this algorithm or this other algorithm by using, for example, a parameter and making a toggle and say if one use that, if zero use the sprite and so on. And I leave this to you as an exercise at home. So um, this was it. I hope this was useful and interesting and brought you a bit farther in your particle experience.
You can download the patch for these on my Patreon, as well as a lot of other patches, so I invite you to check it out. Um, thank you very much for watching as always, and see you soon in a new video. Ciao!